Hey, this is Andrew Rains with Apex Pro. This video is gonna focus on the data review features of the Apple iPad, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the recent updates. If you have an iPad, you might have noticed a couple of app updates ago, we released some enhanced data review features. Um, this is actually due to Apple going to what they now call iPad OS, which is a different operating system for the iPad itself. So I'm gonna share my screen over to the iPad, and I will walk you through this new data review functionality. All right, so to access data review, we're gonna go right here to the data tab. Check out some of our other Apex Pro videos for how to connect, calibrate, and drive the OBD2 dash, crew view, and just some of the other features. I'm gonna tap into data. So now we have our, our session list here. Uh, we can see all of our data, uh, it's gonna be saved by the date and the time that it was recorded. As, the most, as of the most recent update, we now have the ability to sync our data with our iCloud. So this tapping this button right here will transfer all of your data to your iCloud drive, and then you'll be able to access that data at any point. So if you have to delete your app for some reason and re-download it, or if you have to, um, to do anything where you need to delete a session or accidentally delete a session, there's now a backup, and it's a really easy backup. Just tap Upload. I'm gonna tap into Dan DeSalle's session right here. Thanks for sending me your data, Dan. Uh, enjoyed talking with you at the racetrack. And we're gonna look over it to um, explain the features. So you'll now notice we uh, not only have this GPS satellite image on the top of the screen here, but we also have another option down here to tap the arrow or slide across this panel right here to access another data review screen. Uh, these two screens will sync together. So if I move our slider right here in the bottom left, you'll notice that it will move the crosshairs and the car on the track. So we'll see the blue dot representing the vehicle's position and then also our crosshairs, which in this case are right here. They're much easier to make out on the actual app itself when you're looking at your own. I would definitely recommend pulling up your iPad or your iPhone and following along. You'll notice on iPhone, it's only gonna be one of these screens. On iPad, we now have two. So the benefit of this is we can now sync our position and another data channel with our graph and our position down here. Just like on the standard data review, these panels right here control what is displayed on the channel on the screen above it. So right now we have APAC score being displayed. This is showing what the lights showed us at this point on the track. It synced up with the lights and also just a generalization of the color of the lights. So mostly green is gonna be represented by green coloring, mostly red by red coloring. I'll link in another video where you can learn more about that. Now, if I change this data channel displayed up here to speed, you'll notice that the coloring is gonna change. Speed is a linear color, so no longer are we uh, seeing the coloring represented by the lights are actually represented by the speed. So slow speed is gonna be red, high speed is gonna be green. When I go down to one of our G channels, like longitudinal G, the coloring will change again. Green is going to be positive acceleration, red is going to be negative acceleration, and you can zoom in and tap at any point on the lap to see what the exact acceleration is at that point. If you do this enough, then you'll start to realize that yellow is gonna be neutral acceleration. So you can see almost an acceleration of zero longitudinal G. Red is going to be your hardest deceleration. All right, so in general, the warmer the color, the more negative the value is. If that makes sense, right? With G, that's gonna be negative G on longitudinal G, lateral. Negative G is gonna be represented by turning left. Positive is gonna be represented by turning right. So you'll notice when you change this down here, that changes what's colored on the GPS satellite image. Now down here on the speed trace, we have three different options for what we can view here. We can view it as uh, distance or time. So this changes what's on the X axis right here. 
So here we have distance, I'll scroll up to time, and now it's lap time over the course of the lap. Two different ways to look at our speed trace. I usually stick with distance. Speed here is gonna change what's displayed on our y-axis here. I can go to longitudinal G, to lateral G. If we have the OBD2 unit, we can view RPM and throttle position. We can also look at yaw rate, which is rotation around the center axis of the car. And we can look at heading, we can actually look at our GPS accuracy. If you ever miss a lap recorded on here, check out GPS accuracy and that will show you if your GPS lost accuracy at any point in the session. Right here it's 0.8 meters pretty much the whole session and jumps up to 0.9. So this was a highly accurate GPS session. Also, if you have the OBD2 dongle, you can read map and coolant temperature. Most of the time I use this for speed, the speed trace or longitudinal or lateral G, and sometimes I use it for yaw rate. Over here on the far right, we can change the color of this trace right here. So we can go from blue to red. And then we can also color it scaled by different variables. So if you wanna see where on the speed trace your apex score is low, we can color the speed trace by apex score. I would look at some of these bumps that are yellow right here. When you're looking at apex score, remember that most of the corners are going to be represented by green. That doesn't mean you're at 100% in every corner. You have to go back to apex score up here and investigate more closely, but yellow is usually going to mean somewhere in the 70% range where there's grip opportunity. And a lot of times we see it towards the top of these, uh, these curves right here where you're decelerating red to yellow or accelerating, turning yellow. Can't do much about that if we're wide open throttle, but right here in turn one, that's some limited utilized braking. There's more analysis content that we can share. Um, we'll continue to walk through the interface for the purposes of this video. Uh, you'll notice if you color it by speed, low speed is going to be warm coloring, high speed is going to be cooler colors, represented by the green. You can color it by longitudinal G. To me, this helps explain the speed trace really nicely. We're looking at longitudinal G overlaid on our speed trace. So decreases in the speed trace will be red longitudinal G, meaning negative acceleration. Increases in the speed trace trending up and to the right is going to be green, that means we're accelerating. You can see some of the yellow is the more neutral acceleration areas. Uh, then we can go to lateral G. Now we can see which corners were turning right, which corners were turning left and about at which point on the speed trace we start to add that steering input by the color changing. We can view several other screens. So if I tap the arrow again or slide across the bottom, we can move across here. Now this is our friction circle. This unit is slightly uh, yawed on the dash, evidenced by uh, some plottings up here that we wouldn't normally see. But what we see here on the friction circle is longitudinal G on this axis, on the y-axis, and lateral G here across the x-axis. So this would be cornering to the left, cornering to the right, accelerating in a straight line, breaking in a straight line. And then what's really important on this guy is how far out does it bow during deceleration and cornering. This would be breaking and turning right and breaking and turning left. If we go one more screen over to the right, we can plot different variables just on like a histogram plot to see our consistency in lap time, our consistency in apex score, our consistency in average speed, our consistency in longitudinal G values, average longitudinal G values, all sorts of cool stuff that we can do there. All right, we can also go over here to our lap list and overlay multiple laps where then all of the data channels that we see here will now show the two laps chosen. If I go to the play button right here in the bottom right of the screen, I think that's important uh, to call out here. We've got our play button right here. and tap play, and that will move the vehicle's position around the lap. You'll see it represented here on the traction circle plot. My Wi-Fi is not strong at the office. You'll notice with a better Wi-Fi signal and a better cellular signal that this positioning will appear a lot more accurately. It's kind of ironic. We don't have great Wi-Fi. We're a tech company. Uh, it's just kind of how the world works, isn't it? All right, let's see what else we can do. If we go back to our speed trace view here, you'll now notice that there's two laps overlaid. We can 
move the speed trace and manipulate it by pinching the, the speed trace or double tapping to zoom in. And that way we can see uh, really some more minute details on where there are gaps and differences where the driver is braking differently on one lap versus another. Really nice and easy to, uh, to make some of that stuff out. Now I'm gonna deselect the second lap by pressing and holding on that lap again. And we're gonna look at this bar right here, all right? This bar up here at the top of the screen, I'm having a hard time circling it. There we go, right there. All right, so this bar is a, a slider, uh, it's a scale. And what it does is changes the coloring of the lap. So whatever we have the lap, uh, the GPS satellite image set to for color, right now it's APAC score, this uh, will take away some of the coloring. So if we start right here on the right side and slide it inward, you'll notice that the green coloring goes away. Okay, I'm gonna move that one back. If I go right here, press and hold and slide it inward, you'll notice that the red coloring goes away. So this is helpful. Let's say we don't wanna analyze where we're at wide open throttle, which will be red coloring on the straightaways. I can pull this in, and maybe I don't wanna see where my, I'm using the peak grip either, so I can slightly slide that in a little bit more. And now we can go look at areas right past the apex of turn one, we're underutilizing the grip there. Little couple of momentary areas here in, in turn five could probably get on the power way earlier coming out of turn 16 right here. All the way through turn 15, there's some grip utilization. That really helps us uh, view the data slightly differently um, so that we can make decisions very quickly about how we want to uh, implement the change that we've learned. Over here, we have uh, our ability to toggle to a standard Google Maps, or I'm sorry, Apple Maps view, or the GPS satellite view. Nice and easy. And then up in the top right corner, you'll notice this on all the data review screens, this question mark will give us information about the particular feature that we're viewing. So we can read all about uh, what this feature talks about. This one's particularly helpful. Uh, this is what explains each analysis channel and what it represents, also what it's measured by. So speed can be miles per hour or kilometers per hour, gain losses of time delta, longitudinal acceleration. Um, Really helpful there. Uh, the last thing I'll touch on is that gain loss channel. So when we press and hold a second lap down, I'm gonna reselect lap six here by pressing and holding, and now I see two check marks appearing on the left side. If I go right here to this tab in the middle or this one below, I can change the view to the gain loss channel. It's only available once I've selected two laps. But now I can see the difference in two lap times. So the blue lap is our baseline lap. This lap right here is going to be what the gain loss channel is based off of. So think of it as uh, your standard lap, the point of comparison. If the gain loss channel, and I will go back to the standard lap view, if the gain loss channel is trending up and to the right as it is right here, uh, then what we're showing there is that the baseline blue lap is gaining or improving in time over the red lap. If it's trending downwards, as it does here on the whole first part of the lap, for the most part, then the red lap was improving over the blue lap. So negative gain loss, red coloring right here means the red lap's faster. Positive coloring trending up and to the right means the blue lap's faster. So this way we can go and more closely analyze where this lap gained time. So what I'm gonna look at here on this particular data is some of these big changes. And I can actually slide my position on the lap forward so that I can see where this is. And what I can see right here is based on the coloring change right here, I can tell that this driver did something uh, to actually lose time compared to his best lap right here in turn five. So really nice and easy uh, way to see where exactly you stand based your other laps. I call that learning from your slower self. Um, it's nice uh, and easy functionality to have uh, and to use. All right. So I, I really appreciate you guys joining me here. Uh, feel free to comment on the, you know, the comment section of this video if you have any questions. Um, shoot us an email, apex at apextrackcoach.com, and we're happy to answer them. Uh, we're really excited to offer uh, all these features and more coming soon for iPad. Uh, thanks a lot for your business. 
Um, we certainly enjoy making these tools. Let us know if there's anything else we can do to help improve your experience using Apex Pro.